Jean-Jacques Velasco, a recognized scholar on the study of optics and an engineer at the prestigious National Center for Space Research, which is the equivalent of NASA in the United States. He is in charge of SEPRA, the organization which investigates atmospheric phenomena and UFOs for the French government. These only have eyewitness accounts. They have no other corroboration. May I ask you a question? Of course. Do you believe any of this? No. But we've had uh, hundreds of reported sightings. All atmospheric phenomena explained by natural causes. So why do we continue? If we are to be taken seriously, our efforts must use rigorous scientific methods, even if we never come up with anything. So all this could be an exercise in futility. Yes, that's right. Velasco, a scientist who needs hard evidence to be convinced, had seen nothing to confirm the existence of UFOs. In the countryside of trans en provence Renato Nicolai was about to have an experience that would give Velasco the evidence he was waiting for. That day, it was about five o'clock in the evening. I was working in the fields when I saw a strange object. I tried to get closer. I was about 30 meters from it when I saw it. Only when it took off, 30 or 40 seconds later, could I really notice its shape and form. Renato brought his neighbors to the site. Naturally, they were skeptical. I know what I saw. See? What did do that? We should call the police. He saw it, he should call the police. You should, Renato. And uh, how large was it? It's no big. Maybe three meters across, one and a half meters high. I see. Have you ever seen anything like this before, sir? Never. And you are uh, perhaps interested in UFO? Ma, what, are you crazy? Ma, what, it just landed, it killed my onions, and it left. So I call you, that's all, OK? Of course. Thank you, sir. Mm. Well, the witness appears legitimate. Look at the ground. Yes. After we have taken our samples, no one touches anything until the government space research team gets here. Let's remove all the variables. I want a psychological examination of the witness and the team to investigate the possibility of a hoax. Uh, yes, sir. We sent the soil samples to the lab at the University of Toulouse. Now, what about the lab at Paul? They got the samples yesterday. Oh, and the good news, we have the same team who worked on the lunar samples examining them. Good. What about vegetation samples? We sent those uh, and some soil samples to the National Institute for Agricultural Research. Who's handling it? Michel Bunyaz. Very good. Get him on the phone. Meet Michel Bunyaz. He holds advanced degrees in engineering, biochemistry, and statistics. 
He has contributed to an estimated 200 scientific articles in over 50 international journals. He has written four books and received numerous honors and awards, including laureates from the Academy of Sciences and the Biological Society. Uh, Michel Bounioua, s'il vous plaît. Michel Bounioua. Hello, Michel. This is Jean Jacques Velasco. Ah, comment ça va? Yes, ça va bien. What have you got? Well, I'm getting some unusual results. I want to investigate this further. I'll go down there myself tomorrow to take some samples. Come see me when you are finished. Yes, of course. Au revoir. Professor Bunyaz and his assistant flew to Transom Provence to obtain soil and plant samples. It is probably the first time that uh, after a very well characterized event concerning a UFO, there was a full scientific study showing that some changes were brought to uh, the plants near the place where the UFO landed and that these biochemical changes were decreasing with increasing distances from the trace so that all the findings, the biochemical findings, could be put into equations and be mathematically characterized in a very accurate way. Then these findings were compared with the same result obtained several years later so that these controls led us to, to realize that on the same area, two years after the event, all the findings, all the things were uh, uh, recovering a, a normal shape, a normal pattern of uh, biochemical characteristics. Following procedure, a psychologist was sent to interview Renato Nicolai to determine if he was a reliable witness. Nicolai, as always, was extremely honest and very down to earth. So, you found no variations from his testimony? No, none. He just saw what he saw. He doesn't appear to be the kind of man who would make something like this up. You have no doubt? Oh, in my professional opinion, none whatsoever. He seems quite unaffected by any of it. I was just a bit annoyed at all the attention. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Velasco continued to coordinate the research. A lab in Toulouse was used, as well as the one at the Institute for the National Research of Agriculture. In all, it was an exhaustive scientific undertaking, both in the lab and in the field. Velasco realized from the evidence obtained from Bunyaz that this case was extraordinary and could not be dismissed as a hoax. He continued to examine all possibilities. Bunyaz had checked with the military and had been assured that no military prototypes had been in the area. Is there any chance of a hoax? Could someone duplicate the effect by other means? No one knew what soil samples I would take, what tests I would run. There were no samples of herbicide in the soil, no traces of anything man-made. If someone wanted to create this, they would need more years of study than you and I have together. And they'd also have to have a greater knowledge of toxic compounds than exist anywhere. You're still not sure, are you? I'm a scientist. The lab results were astounding. Based on the way the ground was impacted, whatever had landed that day in Renato's garden weighed three and a half to five tons and heated the soil to a temperature between 1100 and 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. In time and in distance, all the biochemical uh, findings are consistent with the description given by the witness. And it is probably the first time in the world, to my knowledge, that such a complete set of data has been obtained on such uh, cases of UFO uh, landing. When I realized that a strange thing had happened, I went back to the place to look again and again. I was trying to understand if it had been a hallucination or if it was real. I had not hallucinated because the ground was burnt. There was an imprint and the imprint was examined by the police. 
The next day, they came and made a report. Then some scientists came to obtain soil samples, and in effect, they admitted that something had happened in that spot. In effect, we were in the presence of an unidentified phenomenon, which had been witnessed and that had left traces in the soil and surrounding environment. In conclusion, after the case in Transon Provence, one cannot have the same perception about the UFO phenomenon, for one can no longer debate whether or not it exists. One cannot say, do you believe in UFOs or don't you believe in UFOs? For now we are aware of phenomena which we cannot control.